Hey class, it's Mr. M again, looking at another assessment question. Here you have the graph of the first derivative of a function, and the question asks you intervals of a function which is not shown, f. We have its derivative, but we don't have the function. But from this function, we must deduce where f is concave down. Well, that's a toughie. Well, let's make sure we understand what we know before we approach this problem. A concave down function looks something like this. So if f is concave down, its behavior would either be increasing, as you have here, or decreasing, as you have here, but in both cases, you have concave down behavior. Well, for example, this appears to be a negative parabola. Its derivative would be negative 2x, which is a line like so. Let me add some axes to help you here. And this is what we did in class with the generic case. Negative x squared that's obviously concave down, its derivative is negative 2x, and the second derivative of negative 2x is simply negative 2, which is to say that a function is concave down. So what we arrived at through that deduction, or that induction rather, is that f is concave down, where f double prime is negative. Because this thing is always negative. It's always negative 2. It doesn't go up, it doesn't go down. It always stays where it is. It's negative 2. Well, that's all well and good. We don't have f double prime here. We have f prime. This is the graph of f prime, not f double prime. Well, we can find f double prime, or at least approximate f double prime, by investigating the behavior of the graph that we're given. Since this is f prime, its slope would be the derivative of what we have. And since we have f prime, its slope, or its derivative, would be f double prime. So this basically asks us, what's the slope? Well, now we can connect it back to this math fact that we discovered in class. A function is concave down, where its second derivative is negative, or, in other words, where its first derivative is decreasing. Where its first derivative is decreasing. Let's look back here for a moment. Because this is the picture that we have, although it's a curve, uh, it's still the, the snapshot that we're looking for. Uh, this is negative 2x, or something like it, if that's a concave down parabola. What do you notice about its behavior? Well, it's not going uphill. It's not going uphill anytime soon either. It's always going downhill, which is to say it is always decreasing, which is also to say that f is concave down when its derivative, its first derivative, is decreasing, which connects us back to this concept here. What's the slope, or where is the slope negative, to be more precise? Well, let's begin with this part of our graph. Is the slope negative? No. Now notice, we're not talking about the values here. That's with f's increasing or decreasing behavior. When you have f prime, its slope, or its increasing or decreasing behavior, tells you the sign or polarity of f double prime, or the second derivative, which in turn tells you about concavity. So the fact that this is increasing or uphill tells you that f is concave up in that interval. Here you have a slope of 0. Here you also have a slope of 0. And in between, you have negative slopes, just like back here, decreasing. And beyond here, you have positive slopes. So the intervals we've created here between the zeros, and these are effectively called terrace points, you have increasing f prime, you have decreasing f prime, and again, these barriers here represent zeros. And then you have increasing f prime, which means that f would be concave up, concave down, and concave up. Because when f prime is decreasing, you have concave down behavior, as we see right here. Decreasing, decreasing. So what's that interval? Well, that would just be from the terrace point here and the terrace point here, f is
concave down, I'm going to abbreviate here to save space, over negative 2, that's where it starts to be downhill, and it stops being downhill at positive 2. F is concave down over negative 2 to positive 2 because, justify, because, because F double prime is negative. You could also say, so this would be redundant, but an alternative answer after the word because, because f double prime is negative or f prime is decreasing. Since we're given a graph of f prime, this may actually be a better approach, since it deals with f prime, which is what we're given. All right, hope this helped.